Question, is anyone else on Earth as cool as Idris Elba? Answer, no. You might think that a guy who is as busy as Elba wouldn't have time to do a silly Disney role. You'd be wrong. Has there ever been a moment where you're watching a Disney or Pixar movie and you think, where have I heard that voice? It irks you until you have to rush to IMBD to get that ah moment. You might be surprised to learn that several famous Disney characters have that sort of connection. A studio like Disney likes to reuse their voice actors over multiple films. Some of these stars you might recognize by name. Movie stars like Idris Elba, Mindy Kaling, and John Goodman like to lend their talents to the Mouse House. Others you might not know that you've been a fan of for decades. Well, consider the secret out as we go through all of the best Disney voice actors that you've loved for years. Let's dive right into the secret connection between these Disney characters. John Goodman is seriously awesome. He's made a name for himself as one of the best character actors in Hollywood. The actor's probably best known for his work on TV in starring roles in Roseanne, Alpha House, and The Connors. He's also an accomplished movie actor. Goodman has starred in films like Argo, The Monument Men, and 10 Cloverfield Lane. His Disney history is also pretty impressive. You might not realize it, but he's appeared in several big Disney movies. The first Disney feature he starred in was the underloved comedy The Emperor's New Groove. There he played the humble peasant Pacha, who proved to to be the perfect companion to David Spade's Wacky Cusco. His second and most notable Disney role was in Pixar's awesome Monsters, Inc. Goodman voiced Sully, the greatest scary monster of them all. That is, until he developed a conscience through his friendship with Boo. His chemistry with co-star Billy Crystal was so great that they even made a sequel. Monsters University showcased the meeting between Sully and Mike Lebowski in college. That one wasn't as good as the first one, but it's still Pixar, so that means it was pretty solid. Goodman also had a small role in The Princess and the Frog. He played the lovable king of Mardi Gras, Big Daddy LaBeouf. Does Mardi Gras actually have a king? Is it just like Game of Thrones but with more beads? Kristen Bell has had the kind of career most actresses would kill to have. She's been in several amazing shows. The Good Place, Gossip Girl, and House of Lies have all benefited greatly from her wry wit. To most of her fans, she'll always be Neptune's greatest detective, Veronica Mars. That proved so popular that it led from a TV series to a movie and then back for a TV revival. Her Disney creds are pretty stellar, too. There really hasn't been a Disney musical that's made quite the impact that Frozen has over the last decade or so. A lot of that has to do with Bell's fantastic performance as Anna. She also got to voice her all-time favorite animal in Zootopia, where she played Priscilla the Sloth. She's gotten to be both a Disney princess and her number one animal? That's not bad. Honestly, though, none of that is Belle's best work. Her Africa music video with husband Dak Shepard and her birthday sloth reaction are YouTube legends. Question, is anyone else on Earth as cool as Idris Elba? Answer, no. He's been in two of the most legendary TV shows, The Wire and The Office. Not only that, but he's also worked with famous directors like Guy Ritchie, Guillermo del Toro, Ridley Scott, and Aaron Sorkin. The man exists in the MCU as well as both the Star Trek and Fast and the Furious universes. All that would be enough to call him the coolest guy in Hollywood without even counting the fact that he's John freaking Luther. You might think that a guy who is as busy as Elba wouldn't have time to do a silly Disney role you'd be wrong. His first appearance as a Disney character was the rough-around-the-edges wildebeest police captain Bogo in Zootopia. He followed that up in the same year with a terrifying performance as the evil tiger Shere Khan. In Finding Dory, he played the sea lion Fluke against Rudder, voiced by his former co-star from The Wire, Dominic West. He's also a pretty good musician-slash-DJ. As if he really needed to be any cooler. Tone it down, man. There's not enough cool to go around, and you're hogging it all. Speaking of awesome people from The Office, Mindy Kaling has really made a name for herself in her post-Kelly Kapoor days. She jumped right out of The Office and into her own show, The Mindy Project. Since then, she's worked on movies like Ocean's 8, Late Night, and A Wrinkle in Time. The writer-actress is quickly becoming one of the hottest talents in Hollywood, so it's no surprise that she's got several Disney credits under her belt. Inside Out featured an amazing cast. Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Bill Hader, and Louis Black all played one of the emotions in Riley's head. There's no shame if you missed Mindy Kaling as disgust the first time you watched it. That's an easy sea of talent to get lost in. She also had a funny little role in Wreck-It Ralph as Vanellope's main racing rival, Tofta Mutton Fudge. Try saying that name 10 times fast. So obviously, she needs to write a Disney movie next. A musical based around an Indian princess voiced by Mindy Kaling? Just take my money now. The average person may not know the name Alan Tudyk, 
but he's practically nerd royalty. He was the Versus' greatest pilot in the beloved Joss Whedon series Firefly and its spin-off movie Serenity. Not only that, but he played K2 in Rogue One and Mr. Nobody in Doom Patrol. Nerd cred doesn't really get much better than that. What's surprising is that he has just as much Disney cred, if not more. He's been in almost every modern Disney animated feature. His illustrious Disney character career started with his villainous turn as King Candy in Wreck-It Ralph. Then he appeared in Frozen as the Duke of Wesselton, though that one wasn't quite as memorable. Luckily, he got a meteor role in the Marvel Disney Big Hero 6 as the bad guy, Alistair Cray. From then on, it was clear that the animation team considered him their lucky penny. He played a character in Zootopia that parodied his Frozen role. Instead of playing the Duke of Wesselton, he played a character named Duke Weaselton as a sort of inside joke. He even got to ham it up as the lovable chicken sidekick Hey Hey in Moana. Then he got to take it back to his Disney origins with Wreck-It Ralph 2. King Candy may have bitten the dust in the original, but that didn't stop Tuttick from playing the Google parody Knows More. So Disney now owns 20th Century Fox and they obviously love Alan Tuttick. Clearly they need to revive Firefly, right? Maybe the crew now has a plucky robot pilot that sounds just like Wash. Back in the late 90s, Brad Garrett was one of the biggest names in television. He played Robert Barone in the hit show Everybody Loves Raymond. Since then, the Emmy Award-winning actor hasn't been able to find the same success since that series went off the air. He's had plenty of television appearances in things like Fargo, Single Parents, and Till Death. None of those performances granted him anywhere near the same level of acclaim. Luckily, he's had a great career as a voice actor. Garrett is a Disney regular, having appeared in a plethora of projects across Disney Animation and Pixar. He's appeared in so many Disney movies that it it'll be easier to just do a little lightning round. He played Dim in A Bug's Life, Bloat in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, and Chef Gusteau in Ratatouille. Those were just the Pixar ones, too. For Disney proper, he played the Hook Thug in Tangled, Chug in the Planes franchise, and ER across several movies. Even all that doesn't cover his Disney television work spanning from The Mighty Ducks to Tangled the series. I'm pretty sure the guys at Disney just have Brad Garrett on speed dial at this point. Either that or he just lives in the studio. When I say the name Wallace Shawn, you probably don't know who I'm talking about. Then when I say the word INCONCEIVABLE, you know exactly who I'm talking about. The actor may be most famous for playing Bazzini in The Princess Bride, but that's far from all he's done. He's been in other famous films such as My Dinner with Andre, Manhattan, and Clueless. Shawn even had a wonderful guest starring gig as the Grand Nagus in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. More than all that, he's another fantastic Disney voice actor. He's one of the main players in the Toy Story troupe of actors. Across all four films, he's played the neurotic dinosaur Rex. He's also played Bob Parr's boss in The Incredibles and Principal Fetchit in Chicken Little. For old school Disney fans, he also played the principal in a goofy movie. Supposedly, Pixar has decided to stop making Toy Story movies. If what they've said before on the matter is any indication, he'll probably be playing Rex for the next 20 years. The hit TV show Seinfeld made a lot of people's careers. There were dozens of regular guest stars, but few have been as successful as Patrick Warburton. His dry but enthusiastic performance as David Putty launched his career into overdrive. Since then, he's appeared in several TV shows, from The Tick to Rules of Engagement. Most notably, he has a recurring role as the disabled cop Joe Swanson on Family Guy. His best voice work isn't on Family Guy, though. There's no doubt that his greatest performance to date is of the dim-witted manservant Kronk from The Emperor's New Groove. If you haven't seen the Kronk's mission scene from that film, go watch it as soon as possible. It's 100% comedy gold. He played Kronk in several spin-offs since then. Aside from Kronk, he's been in Chicken Little, The Wild, and Planes Fire and Rescue. Not to mention, he was in the Disney television shows Kim Possible and played Buzz Lightyear in the spin-off series. If they keep remaking old Disney cartoons into live-action movies, maybe Warburton can play Kronk in the new Emperor's New Groove. It's bound to happen eventually. They're running out of 90s musicals. If you weren't alive in the 90s, you might not realize how big of a deal The Little Mermaid was. Pretty much every little girl was obsessed with the mermaid princess Ariel and her quest to find love. Actress Jodie Benson absolutely crushed it as the sea's best princess. Sorry, Mera from Aquaman, you didn't quite cut it. Her rendition of A Part of Your World was a huge deal at the time. Disney even struggled a bit with the immediate demand for the song to hit the radio. It may seem weird in the days where Let It Go is always on the radio, but Disney wasn't actually ready with a single. After so much popular demand, the the song was eventually released along with Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl. Under the Sea even ended up winning an Oscar, which is strange considering how much better a part of your world is. Benson played Ariel several times, both on television and on the big screen. Most recently, she played her in Wreck-It Ralph 2. There's even rumors of a Disney princess team-up movie on the way. This isn't her only Disney credit, though. 
She was the tragically faded robot Weebo in the Robin Williams flick Flubber. She also voiced the Barbies in the Toy Story films. And if you don't blink, you might even catch her cameo in Enchanted. Halle Bailey is destined to kill it in her The Little Mermaid, but that doesn't mean Jodie Benson isn't still a legend. There's one Disney voice actor who absolutely reigns supreme. John Ratzenberger is Pixar's go-to guy, and he's appeared in every single one of their films. Once upon a time, he was best known as the hapless mailman Cliff in Cheers. For those of you that haven't seen the show, he was the guy who would sit at the end of the bar and list off random facts. He considered himself an expert in pretty much everything, and was actually an expert in nothing. All right, put 10 seconds on the clock, and we'll go through every single one of these. His most notable role was Ham in the Toy Story franchise. He also had a pretty good part in Monsters, Inc. as the Abominable Snowman. Most of his other roles have been basically cameos. P.T. Flea, The Charade Fish, Underminer, Mac, Mustafa, John, Foreman Tom, Juan Ortodonkia, Earl, and Fritz. Aside from Pixar, he's also appeared in both Planes movies. You know, because appearing in over 20 Pixar movies just wasn't enough Disney for him. He's been in so many movies that he's basically Pixar's Samuel L. Jackson. Well, aside from the actual Samuel L. Jackson, that is. Well, now the mystery behind the secret connections between Disney characters is solved. Were there any voice actors that we missed? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from The Binger.